What's up, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of the Sit Down. As always, if you enjoy this show, make sure you hit the like button and let me know let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you're new around here or you just haven't done it yet, I don't know what you're waiting on. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button before you go, so you never miss a Sit Down episode. I appreciate you all for watching today, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to talk about another mafia topic, and we're going to get in to the long life of a man who had mob uh, overtones in his blood. He started off as a hijacker, was said to have been involved in some very uh, notorious crimes. We're going to talk about Vincent Osaro today on the sit down, a man with a long life in Cosa Nostra, particularly in the Bonanno crime family. Towards the end of his life, though, there would be an unlikely defection in his life, which would lead him to a court of law. And ultimately down the road, his uh, becoming broke would lead him to do some pretty desperate things to earn money. The story of Vincent Asaro next on Sit Down Shorts. Vinny Asaro was born in 1935 in Ozone Park, Queens. As we know, Ozone Park is a haven for the mafia. We don't have to go into the long laundry list of people that came up and did business in Ozone Park and Howard Beach. It is a haven for the mafia. Uh, interestingly enough, Vincent Asaro had the mob in his blood. It was said that his father and grandfather were connected to the mafia, and his uncle was Michael Zaffirano, Bonanno family porn king. I did a video on him uh, a month or two ago. Uh, he was the chieftain of Times Square for the Bonanno crime family. So Vinny Asaro had the mob uh, kind of in his uh, bloodlines. Um, by the 50s, um, there was a, an addiction that Vincent Asaro would get. It would actually be heroin. He was uh, said to be an admitted heroin addict, but he would kick the drug uh, at one point in the 60s and ultimately down the road develop another addiction, which would really lead to some bad things that he would do late in his life to earn money to kind of support himself because he had been broke by that point. By the 60s, he was very involved with hijacking. And if we know anything about the Bonanno, Lucchese crime families, they were very involved with hijacking. People like uh, Joey Messino uh, started as a hijacker. John Gotti started as a hijacker. Jimmy Burke was a big time hijacker. Greg Scarpa at one point was a hijacker. So Vincent Asaro was getting into something that was very big for most mobsters. And as we know, in the 60s, uh, cargo terminals at airports were great ways to earn money. They steal shit. They fence it to uh, warehouses that can turn back an easy profit, uh, whether it was cigarettes, clothes, whatever. Uh, cargo hijacking was gigantic. And the mob truly had a piece of all the terminals. By the 60s, uh, Vinny Asaro was stealing. He was a master thief. And he would get connected with longtime Lucchese associate and powerhouse Jimmy Burke. They would start stealing a whole lot of things. And also, we know Jimmy Burke would be involved in an infamous heist. And the feds say Vinny Asaro was involved as well. We'll get to that in just a second. But during the 60s, they uh, befriend an individual named Paul Katz. Katz was a hijacker and had a warehouse that Asaro and Burke were selling stolen goods out of. They were throwing the loads to him. He was offloading them. Now, in the late 60s, uh, December in that uh, year, uh, Jimmy Burke's uh, business gets raided by the federal government. He believes that Paul Katz is an informant. Now, on in the evening of December 6, 1979, the son of Paul Katz, Lawrence Katz, would later testify about that night. He would recall saying that um, the, Paul Katz told his wife that he had to go out for a meeting and said that, quote, if I'm not home in a couple of hours, call the cops. Now, ultimately, he would never return and he was reported missing. He would ultimately be turned up dead. And it was it was alleged by the government for a long time that Jimmy Burke and Vincent Asar were probably likely the killers of Paul Katz. Now, we'll get to what exactly happened and the role that Vinny Asar would play in it in just a little bit. Obviously, as the 70s played themselves out, Vincent Asar would become a made man in the Bonanno crime family in 1977. And by 1979... Um, he would become a capo. But there was a major event that would go on in 1978. As we know, Jimmy Burke and a gaggle of Lucchese pals would pull off the largest heist, if not the largest heist, in American history at the Lufthansa Air Cargo Terminal, which, as we know, we learned that in Goodfellas. Now, in that robbery, the thieves would make off with millions of dollars of, of cash and jewelry. And after the 
robbery, it was alleged by the government that Vincent Asaro made something out of this. The reason for that was Asaro was the main chieftain of the mob, particularly in the Bonanno crime family in Lufthansa Air Terminal. And it was noticed, noted by them that he likely was involved in some of the planning. And he would get a large windfall, according to people that knew him well. It was never able to be proven and ultimately, the government would try to prove it in the 2000s, which we'll get to. But he was becoming a very known member of the mob. He became a cop of regime uh, in the late 70s, and he was doing well. Um, he began operating Vincent Asaro out of an auto body shop in Ozone Park, Queens. And I want to tell a kind of an interesting story, a uh, mob-related story that, that, I, that I know about Vincent Asaro. During the time um, of his kind of... Um, renaissance to becoming a mafia member and ultimately having that uh that that auto body shop he was a lover of animals and it was said that Vinny Asaro at the auto body shop had a dog that he enjoyed um it was like a junkyard dog of sorts and probably was only nice to him and his cohorts but they started doing business with this individual Peter Zaccaro Zaccaro was a Gambino associate and at one point I guess he goes to the auto body shop to see Vincent Asaro and the dog attacks him and bites him Zakara pulls a gun out and shoots the dog. And Vinny Asar goes absolutely nuts. He goes to Zakara's home and threatens to kill him, basically, for shooting his dog. He then asks for a sit down to Joey Messino. And Joey Messino basically says to him, look, you know, I I'm sorry about your dog, but we're not we're not going to sanction a hit on Zakara because he killed your dog. Uh, and that was just kind of the kind of guy Vincent Asara was. He was willing to kill albeit I mean, if someone killed my dog i wouldn't be very happy either but Vinny asaro was a gangster's gangster according to many people and just the thought of killing a dog was enough to send him over the edge and we would send a lot of people over the edge quite honestly but joey messino said no uh, we're not killing someone over the dog um now throughout the 80s and 90s vincent asaro will continue his ascent uh, towards the top of the Bonanno crime family. The Bonanno crime family was very strong once Joey Messino took over. He got them through some long and storied problems, including Carmine Galanti, the Donnie Brasco situation. Joey Messino became a very formidable boss. And into the 90s, uh, they were a prime uh, family. They were doing a lot of good things. Messino was a good boss at that time. And one of his main people was Vinny Asaro. Now, once all the stuff would shake out with uh, Joey Messino, obviously it goes from being really good to really bad. As we know, in the early 2000s, Joey Messino is indicted. He faces a death penalty and decides to cooperate against his cohorts. And he would take down Vinny Bacciano and other people. But one of the people that was able to get through all this unscathed was Vincent Asar. And what Vinny was doing was he was starting to school the next group of gangsters coming up because he knew eventually he was getting older and he was going to have to start dealing with some of the younger people. Enter his nephew, Ronnie Gialonzo, who we've talked about before. He would be schooled by his uncle and ultimately become a formidable member of his own in the Bonanno crime family. And as we know with Vinny, um, he would school him and Ronnie would create his own crew, which ultimately by the end would do Vinny Asaro in. Now, during all this, one of Vincent Asaro's closest confidants was his cousin, Gaspare Valenti. And what starts to shake out is after Joey Messino goes away, like many families in the 2000s and the new 2010s, Vincent Asaro and his people start to really struggle. The same amounts of money aren't starting to come in. As we know, by this point, Vinny Asaro had a major gambling problem. And I want to talk a little bit about that. Asaro was noted at points as saying he had a gambling issue. He loved to gamble. He'd be seen multiple times blowing $10,000, $15,000 at a racetrack. Um, many gangsters loved to gamble. And Vincent Asaro was no different. And it started to become a problem because once he got into the 2000s and the 2010s, he's not making as much money. His crew's not making as much money. He's got a gambling problem on top of it. He's older. Uh, money starts to dry up. And the issue that presents itself to Asaro is he's probably going to have to pay the piper at some point for some of his connections, not only to that Paul Katz stuff, um, but the Lufthansa connection possibly as well. And that would be uh, something that would come. In 2010, Gaspari Valenti decides, even though he's not under, under indictment, he does not want to be in the mob anymore. He's tired of not making any money. He's living hand to mouth. He can't pay his bills. So what does he do? He runs to the feds. 
and they wire him for sound. And for a few years, he starts talking on tape to Vince and Asaro. And most of the conversations, honestly, were quite nondescript. What the government was trying to do is connect Vincent Asaro to Lufthansa and to Paul Katz. But most of the conversations ended up just being and showing what and where Vincent Asaro was in his life. He was an old man who just didn't have much money. His crew wasn't making any money. He lived hand to mouth. He would describe his lonely life, quote, I don't come out early anymore. Where am I going? I got no place to go. He would lament about meals he had, just really stuff that, you know, old people talk about. He also would discuss that he enjoyed going to social clubs, but people at the Cafe Liberty Club in Brooklyn weren't happy with him. Quote, they hate me. I'm not paying my dues anymore. He didn't have enough money to pay his dues. He would talk about um, certain members of his crew trying to ask him for money, two, three, four hundred dollars. They didn't have nickels to rub together. He would also talk about his son. And by this point, he was going to draw Masaro, his son, who was a skipper in the family as well, for money. He didn't have any money. And I'm sure Jerome probably said, Dad, I'm not giving you any more money. You're blowing it. I'm not giving you any more money. And Vinny Asaro would talk about his son as well on tape. Quote, Jerry's for Jerry. He's a fucking greedy cocksucker. I lost my son. I lost my son when I made him a skipper. I lost my son when I put him in there. He would also discuss that he was shaking down family members for proceeds of homes. He, he just, he had nothing. He was going to absorbent lengths to get money. And this was also an issue because he was starting to pal around with un, unsavory kids, kids that had no morals, kids that were running at people's homes, kids that were robbing banks. And this would ultimately do him in. In 2014, the feds felt like they had enough and they arrested Vincent Asaro, seen here walking out of Queens Federal Court. They believed they had him not only for the Goodfellas, Lufthansa case, but also Paul Katz. And what would happen is Valenti would take them to the tomb of sorts that he said Paul Katz was at. Uh, Paul Katz was said to have been buried in a home in a basement that Jimmy Burke owned. But in the 80s, Burke became paranoid and moved the body. The Fed still found DNA of Katz. And they connected the murder to Vince and Asaro. Now, the good thing for Asaro was ultimately he was found not guilty of this crime. And most people were quite surprised. The truth of the matter was the feds thought Gaspari Valenti would be a believable witness. And he wasn't. He was not a good witness. None of the wiretaps that they had really ever connected him to anything. He never said anything truly incriminating. And the jury of his peers looked at him like the guy that they thought he was, an old man who maybe had a connection to OC, but was not a murderer. And walking out of court that day, seen here, Vincent Sarr actually spoke to the media and he seemed blown away that he beat this rap. Look, I'm not going to give my opinion. It's likely Vincent Sarr had something to do with Paul Katz. He was probably involved with Lufthansa, maybe the planning. He definitely probably got some proceeds. But again, in federal court, it is the federal government's burden of proof to prove you did something. And Vincent Asaro beat the rap again. Okay, keep in mind, to this point, Vincent Asaro has never been to prison. Okay, he never went to jail really for anything and beat the rap on this case. The government didn't look good with this. They probably should have had a, a conviction and they didn't. Vincent Asaro, though, was desperate, as I said. And he was starting to pal around with his nephew people that his nephew was involved with, including this individual, John J. Gotti, the grandson of John Gotti Sr. He was robbing banks with a mob rat, Gene Barello. They were committing crimes. And not only was Vinny Asaro desperate for money, but he was also a gangster. And we've talked about this in the Gene Barello video. Asaro gets cut off in traffic and orders Barello, Gotti, and another individual, Matthew Fat Mike Rulin, to torch this person's car. Now, keep in mind, this is a citizen. But again, these young kids, they want to prove themselves to Vinny Asaro, and they go and do it. Problem was, they were running amok. They were going nuts. And Asaro basically felt like, I don't fucking care anymore. These guys are kicking up to me. I need money. Um, and this was ultimately the thing that did Vinny Asaro in. In 2017, he would again be arrested by the FBI uh, for an attempted arson and for a bank robbery that these uh, few would commit. Uh, ultimately, he would be found guilty and get eight years in prison. 
Uh, we'll talk about ultimately his end here in a second. Ronnie Gialonzo in the same indictment uh, was indicted for loan sharking and other mob crimes. He sits in prison doing 14 years. The main witness in that case was Gene Barello, who now faces his own lawsuit uh, from a member of the Gotti family for some of his behavior after getting out uh, of prison. Now, uh, as I said in the Barello video, John Gotti uh, is serving a sentence in federal prison and will ultimately face a state sentence as well. Every person involved with this case, for the most part, decided to go to prison. The only one that didn't was Gene Barello, who decided that he wasn't um, worthy enough to go to jail and decides to cooperate. Now, ultimately, for Vinny Asaro, he didn't stay in jail for very long. Um, he would be uh, convicted in 2017, but it will only spend about two and a half years in prison due to the coronavirus pandemic in his old age. He'd be granted compassionate release in 2020. He is in his late 80s and remains in the streets. Now, what he does now, I don't know. I'm sure and hope he got the picture at this point. He probably should just leave his life alone and probably just spend the rest of his twilight years in relative anonymity. But once a gangster, always a gangster, as they say. As always, I thank you for watching. Truly a fascinating life, but one by the end that would really show what gangster life is all about. If you're not up to the upper echelon, you do, you have a gambling problem, you're going to be having major issues. And Vincent Asaro, a lot of people defected on him uh, in their life. You know, his cousin, he had some problems. And by the end, he's always going to be a gangster. Um, but he's really just another story in the long list of mobsters. The question is, did he get? was he involved with that big heist? I'm going to probably say yes. That's just my opinion, though. As always, thank you for watching. What do you think about Vincent Asaro? Was he guilty? Should he have uh, been found guilty? Um, we can talk about that in the comment sections below. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time here on The Sit Down.